Hello and welcome to this uh, episode of Parent University. We're extremely excited to have this program available. Parent University is a program of Cedar Falls Schools that includes educational programs and videos to share information and tips with parents and our community. Topics will cover what students are learning, ways to help your students, and give parents a better understanding of what happens every day in our school buildings. We certainly hope that this is uh, an opportunity to understand and become more engaged in the different programs in the larger community, especially surrounding the Cedar Falls Community School District. We are extremely excited that, that this program today is going to be focused on CAPS, and we have three tremendous guests with us today. Uh, Ethan Weekman, the CAPS Director, thank you for being here. Uh, Joey Nielsen, Student Associate Senior in the Cedar Falls uh, Community School District. And we have Audrey Kittrell, Vice President of Business Development uh, with the Eagle View Partners. So thank you for all three of you being here today. Good to be here. Yeah, well thank you. Uh, the first question really for Ethan is, you know, what is CAPS? So CAPS is a uh, collaboration between business, community, and education to provide our students with professional experiences while developing the local workforce. Uh, cornerstones of the program are innovation, problem solving, career exploration, and professional skills development for basically any career that our associates decide they want to go to. Uh, what that means is, is we take students outside of the high school and we fully immerse them into a professional environment where they work on value-added projects for different businesses and organizations throughout the Cedar Valley and, and actually beyond. We know that we have several strands of CAPS that's occurring right now, which is really exciting. Can you talk a little bit about each of those strands and what those strands are? So yeah, a little bit of history about the CAPS program. It, we started three years ago, actually, with one strand, and that was our engineering strand at Viking Pump was our host site. Mm -hmm. And after that one semester, in the spring semester, we had a, a tremendous amount of growth. So we went from 13 associates to 75 by the next fall. And since we had that growth, we added some different strands and different opportunities for our associates. So we now have, uh, well, at that point, we added two other strands. So we had education strand, which is housed at Schindler Education Center. That's the host site. We added the business solution strands, which was at Mill Race at the time, but is currently at the Center for Business Growth and Innovation on UNI's campus. Um, so at that point, we ran three strands, and that was with 75 associates. The following year, one of the, one of the areas or industry sectors that we had a lot of interest based on student survey was the health industry. So the following year, we launched medical. And so CAPS Medical, we partnered with Allen College as a host site, and we also partnered with Mercy One Cedar Falls as a host site for uh, CAPS Med students. One of the questions I think that comes up frequently is, let's talk the uh, uh, pillars of CAPS and, and what that really means as we look at what does CAPS encompass? So those pillars, like I said, mentioned earlier, is that innovation, the problem solving, the career exploration, and the uh, professional skills training. When we look at our programming, that's what we think about is as we try to make richer, deeper, more valuable experiences for our students, we're basing our experiences off those four cornerstones. What we do well with CAPS is help students develop what their passion is develop those skills that are needed to be successful in any endeavor they choose. And then we also really wor work on what a career plan is for mm -hmm. them. So our goal is, how do we wrap what they're passionate about with what they're skilled at? And then if we can find work or a career that's based on that passion and skill, we feel like that's going to be a, live a pretty rewarding life. Uh, one, of our, one of our mantras that we say is, we want to make Mondays our most exciting and rewarding days because they're, they're passionate about what they're doing. They're excited about going to work every day. Uh, and so our work is based around those ideas. That's really exciting. You know, one of the questions that comes up sometimes is how is CAPS different from an internship? Yeah, that's a really good question. A lot of times you say, oh, so it's an internship. And we actually, we actually act like a consulting firm. So Viking Pump, which is our original host site, we don't work directly uh, as Viking Pump employees or interns. Viking Pump doesn't have 15 high school student interns every semester, but they provide us a space for us to operate. And essentially what happens or how it works is that there are several projects that we collect from real world projects from different businesses and organizations and we put them on a project board. Our associates then select the project that they're gonna work with and with what company that is with. So they'll go through and work with that company on a project but it's not based as an internship. And the reason why is 
internships can be time intensive mm -hmm. and every hour that a company engages in this is a billable hour. So we want to create that higher return on investment by saying, look, let's have a project from beginning to end. So your investment is not a day to day like an internship, which can be um, some take a lot of their time and energy. The other thing is, is we like the project approach because there's a lot of skill sets that go along with that as far as project management. Mm -hmm. We can really get into that problem solving piece and that innovative piece, whereas an internship maybe gets students more caught up into a day to day um, workings of a business and not as much into that innovative and problem solving that we're looking for. So when you go through some of your <clears throat> project approaches with students, how many projects would a student potentially work on in a semester during their CAPS experience? So that's an interesting question because depending on how you define a project, they could, they're could they on multiple different projects and have opportunities. At the beginning of every semester, we have a project called a design sprint, mm -hmm. and that's really come out of uh, feedback that we've got from associates or student associates, I should say. It's, we call them associates in the CAPS program because we treat them like uh, professionals and more like professionals, less like students. So when we talk about a design sprint, our, we got feedback that we want to get thrown right into a CAPS experience right away and not wait three to four weeks to onboard. So we just got done with our design sprint here yesterday. Yes. And so the, what we do is we take a project or a problem from a company, and in this case it was a logo design, mm -hmm. and our associates come in on the second day of their CAPS experience and there's, they're given this logo uh, design project from a company, and so we launch it on day one. They have a little bit of time to work with some team members, which a lot of times they don't know yet because it's only the second day of CAPS. Day two, they work on it, uh, come up with a solution, but then also a pitch that they got to give. And then on day three, we put them on, on stage, they give that pitch and in front of an actual professional uh, panel, and then they get feedback on it. So that's one project. But then they go and select another project based on their interest. Uh, if they're interested in another project, that's typically one that they're going to work throughout the semester mm -hmm. if it's a semester-long project. So if you add the design sprint, a regular project that they do throughout the semester, and they may have time for one smaller project, they're getting into two, three, sometimes four different projects. Which is exciting. It just gives that experience and exposure for our associate students right. in our high school to experience all the different businesses, industries that, that are across our, our Cedar Valley, which is very exciting. Yeah, and, and essentially the, the projects are our fuel to the program, mm -hmm. right? And, and it's not just the end result of what that project is, but it's all the learning that goes along throughout that and also the opportunity for them to explore what it's like to be a professional, right. explore the different careers, uh, the project management skill sets that go with it. So without those real world experiences, without those real world projects with our partners, it's hard to have those experiences that are needed to develop our, our students here in the Cedar Valley. One of the aspects, too, that helps the uh, program be successful is our involvement with the CAPS network. Um, it's a really a, a national, international network. Can you speak a little bit about what that CAPS network is? Yeah, and that, that's a big piece of what we do because some of this work is uh, innovative, which means there's not, it's not necessarily consistent throughout the state or even the nation, but the CAPS network allows us to bounce ideas, get, gain some curriculum ideas, some different things that are going on in their programs that we can bring to Cedar Falls. Uh, the network is, I believe now, at 57 different programs, which is serving over 115 different school districts, and I believe in 18 states, and then one program is in Mumbai. So mm -hmm. there's a wealth of experiences, and people are trying different things and beta testing things all over the nation that we get to tap in into and use those as resources. And some of the uh, strands that I know we've developed have been really supported by the network as we look to grow and expand those. And we'll hear about some of those uh, programs and projects certainly here in a bit with uh, Audrey and Joey as well. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the future of CAPS and, and some of the exciting news as we look at potentially a Cedar Valley CAPS. Can you uh, kind of talk about some of the, the work that's being done in those areas? So yeah, so we've had some successes in a wide range of different areas and some of the school districts have been stopping in and seeing what's been going on here. And there is a cost associated with this and, it, and the Cedar Falls School District has been very generous uh, and, the, and the school board are bringing this to opportunity to Cedar Falls schools. As we looked at these school districts coming in and looking at how much you know, infrastructure that they would need, we were trying to figure out well, how do we work together to bring those costs down and make it easier for communities to engage in it. And because of those conversations, we've come up with a model that we're, we're testing out right now. Uh, we helped Jessup CAPS mm -hmm. and Columbus Catholic CAPS launch their programs here in the last couple of weeks. 
And so we're excited to be partnering with them. In fact, Columbus Caps was at our design sprint mm -hmm. uh, these last couple of days. And that was really neat to see their students, Columbus Caps students and Cedar Falls students in the same area working on the same project for the same partner, uh, business partner. Our, the more districts are starting to see what's going on and starting to see what we're testing out and keeping a close eye on it. Uh, by next year, we've, we have a verbal commitment from Denver uh, schools and then also Don Bosco schools recently are looking to launch programs as well. So by 2021, we're looking at a potential of five different CAPS programs yep. in the Cedar Valley, all working together utilizing each other's resources, working together on projects. You could have students from Denver working with Cedar Falls students on the same project for the same partner. Those are really exciting pieces. Uh, today, actually, the Jessup uh, CAPS program is traveling over to UNI along with Columbus CAPS and our CAPS associates, Cedar Falls CAPS associates, to do a team building training mm -hmm. with the staff at uh, the BCS building on UNI's campus. So that'll be really, uh, really neat to see all of us together, working together on students in the Cedar Valley. And really, as we look at the CAPS model, and especially in maybe smaller districts, similar to the ones that have started the CAPS uh, program, it's really focused on some of the school business relationship within that community. What are some projects that can be done there uh, within that community to build more of that uh, local pride, maybe even some of the local skill sets that are necessary, but with a wider collaborative venture and uh, opportunity uh, with maybe sharing of, of projects, sharing of students, sharing of ideas. It's so exciting to see the direction that that's taking and going to take across the state. Because I know we've been contacted by even districts that are outside of the Cedar Valley on how can this be replicated or at least uh, uh, supported in other areas across Iowa. Right, yeah, and we've got, we've had uh, districts now coming, contacting us from the southern part of the state. We've had a few districts from northwest Iowa looking at how do they do a regional approach of what we're trying to get done. And so it'll be really interesting to see how this type of profession-based learning expands throughout the state of Iowa. Outstanding. Thank you so much for that. We're, we're very proud of the CAPS program and the work that's been going on and certainly the regional work that will be happening, happening across the Cedar Valley right now and, and well into the future as we look at how do we support students in their learning. At this time, I think we will take a short break uh, to be able to uh, uh, come back and then we'll talk with uh, Audrey and Joey a little bit about some of the projects that have been going on recently. So at this time, we will take a break. Underage drinking comes at a cost. What gets crushed when you drink? Welcome and thank you for coming back to the second part of this Parent University regarding our CAPS program. We're very excited to have three guests with us, Ethan Weekman, CAPS Director, uh, Audrey Kittrell from Eagle View Partners, and Joy Nielsen, student, associate, 12th grade student at the Cedar Falls High School. Um, Audrey, can you talk a little bit about why Eagle View Partners uh, became involved with, with the CAPS program? Sure. So as a little background, our company acquired the Black Hawk Hotel about two years ago. And our team has been really busy behind the scenes updating the property and the programs at the hotel. Um, and we knew that 
as part of sort of our rebrand of the Blackhawk, we really needed to um, have a community event that was sort of an opportunity for the public to come back and experience the new version of the Blackhawk. And it, it, I remember the CAPS um, director saying, you know, submit an application for a project that's maybe 9, 10, or even 11 on your to-do list. And we knew the importance of having a community event um, and the time and energy and creativity that needed um, to go behind this sort of an event. Um, so that's why CAPS was um, a really good option for us. That's really neat. And we greatly appreciate yeah. you submitting that so we can yeah. be involved and really partner together. Sure. Can you talk just a little bit about the project? Uh, what was it? Uh, um, when did it take place mm -hmm. uh, and culminate and, and sure. just a little bit of detail about that. Sure, so we ended up um, pitching a project for a murder mystery party at the hotel and we had seen um, previous events like this held mm -hmm. in Minneapolis and Des Moines and knew it was sort of um, something that people were interested in. Right. Um, so I submitted that project to CAPS knowing that it could get the attention of some Cedar Falls students. <laughs> um, uh, I think um, I knew that they would think it was interesting. Um, but on the flip side, it really helped us to sort of focus on our day-to-day -day operations. We're a very small team, um, so it let them sort of um, take full control on running with it from um, start to finish. So um, we ended up hosting the murder mystery party actually about two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, we had 100 people in attendance. Wow. Um, so for that, um, it was great exposure for us and really accomplished the goal of getting people reintroduced with the hotel. That's really exciting. Joey, as, as one of the uh, students involved with that, the associates involved with that, can you talk about the CAPS experience working with this project? Yeah, my team and I um, chose the murder mystery and it being one of the biggest projects that CAPS has done mm -hmm. is a little nerve wracking, but knowing it was like a really fun project, everyone was on board with wanting to do the murder mystery. And um, I think it really helped push what I want to do like post-secondary because I was the manager of the project yep. for my team and I on the CAPS side. And um, it being a part of the marketing sprint of that and, and like just seeing how that works really um, like solidified what I wanted to do what post-secondary. Because do do I think? wanted to be a um, market manager or like in marketing. So. Oh, fantastic, that's mm -hmm. tremendous. You know, there were a lot of different uh, components with this project, obviously, from start to finish uh, throughout the semester, culminating in the actual event. Can you just talk about a few of those maybe um, different aspects that you really had to focus on throughout this project? Yeah, um, a lot of the aspects would have been like, um, like, because it's an event, so we have to um, sell a lot of tickets. There has to be a marketing side yeah. to that. Um, there has to be like a design sort of it because putting on a giant event takes a lot of moving parts and yeah. Yeah, which was really amazing. And I know just with the, when the idea and you started to research and then you actually started to market it and then the number of tickets that were sold mm -hmm. uh, in a short amount of time really showed the interest in how you package things together, which was exciting. Joey, you know, as you look back on, on your CAPS experience, uh, do you uh, think other students should look at CAPS or explore CAPS, take an interest or, or take a CAPS experience? Uh, of course, I think CAPS provides the experience you don't get in the high school or the traditional high school setting and um, it really puts you out in a professional setting um, and for me like working with a client and I think that's um, very good for a regular student to have because it really um, lets you know like how it's going to be in the real world and like how things work. And that's what it's all about, trying mm -hmm. to make sure that we get those experiences, which is different from maybe what people consider as a traditional schooling uh, environment or, or program. Um, Audrey, can you talk a little bit about maybe some takeaways from, from this project? And as the client, as a, a business uh, owner within our community, yeah. uh, what, what those experiences that you took away from this? Sure. I think I was surprised. Um, how value, I knew it would be a value for our company to have um, extra time and energy um, dedicated to a project, but um, I was also, I think, really pleased to see that it was a value to the CAPS um, associates as well, because um, I think an event is deceptively, um, seems it seems easier than maybe what it is, but there's a lot of moving parts, like Joey said, um, and it takes a lot of hard skills, like um, developing a process and a marketing plan and sales and putting yourself in front of um, the public and 
um, customer service skills. So um, I, I was pleased to see it was mutually beneficial. Mm -hmm. um, and I would also say um, there's it seems sort of like um, maybe some secret sauce for the Caps because <laughs> we're actually hosting um, the second murder mystery party coming up. And um, I've been <laughs> having to work a lot harder to sell that event out. Um, and I, I, I'm really appreciative of the of the energy that the Caps program brought to the to the first event. That's really exciting, mm -hmm. Joy. Um, I think a question I know you've been asked in the past, but from your design sprint that you did when you were day two of your Caps experience till now, what do you think were some of those areas of growth for you personally as far as the experiences that you had in Caps? Um, I would say a big area of growth would have been like customer service and all the aspects that go into that yep. and customers being the number one of utmost importance for an event That's of that nature. Really good and understanding you're not doing this for you, you're doing this for the client and yes. understanding the needs of the client to make it very successful. Mm -hmm. Ethan, that's really a question then for you too as the director. You know, as you uh, have seen now the growth of the program, the iteration of the program, what do you see as, you know, from three years ago to now, maybe the growth of the program or growth of students when they start in the program to end in the program? Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, a lot of what we were doing early on in the program was new to everybody and, and one of the things that we were finding that it was very stressful for students because it was just totally new, they do nothing about it and we threw them in some very challenging situations mm -hmm. early on. I think one of our biggest growths now is it's getting a reputation, so like our design sprint is as, isn't as traumatic as it used to be and our, and our students are coming in ready to go with it and, and ready to take on the challenge. You know, we heard some, some really uh, impressive stories where teams were struggling at the beginning of the design sprint, but then we gave them the weekend before they had to pitch it on a Monday, and there were stories of meeting at coffee shops mm -hmm. and gathering around, and that was self-initiated. That's not a requirement. They chose to do those things, and that's that growth of they know what it takes to be successful in CAPS because their friends are telling them, and they're really stepping up to the plate, and that's something that we're exciting to see. Uh, the other thing is we're really starting to zero in on what it is, is to be successful in a CAPS uh, experience and be successful as a pro, uh, professional. So one of the things Joey was talking about was that customer viewpoint. It's mm -hmm. more about the customer and less about my, what I think, but making sure their needs are met. We've been, we've been adapted a thing from uh, Viking Pump that they're using this year as a mantra as customer obsession. And so we're talking a lot with our associates about what does it mean to serve someone else? What does it mean to meet their needs and keep their thoughts and their wants uh, at the forefront of all of our decision making? But then the other thing that we're really working on is this idea of being a self-driven learner. Um, Nate, our, our business developer, will say, you know, you don't need permission to be confident. And so some of that is, is we try to sit back and be more a guide on the side than a sage on the stage, the know-it-alls. And if they ask us questions, we want them to go and figure out how can I find that answer without having to rely on the instructor or the teacher every day to find that answer. So there's a lot of resources that they have at their fingertips, literally. Uh, and we want to make sure they know how to use those properly and efficiently in a way that they can learn. So that self-driven learner piece is a big growth area for us. I think as we uh, now look towards wrapping up the program, Ethan, can you uh, share with us a little bit about where can people go for more information regarding CAPS, uh, potentially if businesses are interested in partnering or uh, other community members? Yeah, the, one of the best places to go is to our website, and that's cfcaps.org. I think there's a longer one coming up here. That's the longer website if you want to write that down. But cfcaps.org is a <clears throat> place, the stop place that it's, you can go to. It'll say engage in the top right-hand corner. We can talk about ways to partner. There are different ways to do that. You can partner with a project, which is, like we said, is the fuel to our program. You can partner with uh, by having mentors, job shadows, uh, even being a guest speaker, which is one of our most valuable experiences, just having professionals come in and tell their life story and how they got where they're at as, as these students are trying to figure out who they are and what paths are actual or paths that are out there for them to take. Um, and then we have host sites. You know, we talked about the different host sites that are out there right now hosting some of our our strands as we look to develop maybe new strands in the future or maybe we want to try something out if you're interested in being a host site for one of our strands, we'd be more than glad to talk about that as well. So cfcaps.org is a great landing place for you. Thank you very much. Uh, we appreciate everybody coming on, on to this program today. 
Audrey, thank you for being a business partner and, and putting your faith in the CAPS program. Joey, thank you for uh, taking the CAPS experience, being the manager on this very successful project. Uh, we know that you're going to be highly successful into the future uh, because of the skills and, and your abilities, uh, some of which was hopefully due to the CAPS experience. Thank you, uh, Ethan, for your leadership with the CAPS and, and the growth. And we know there's going to be many exciting things come forward as we look towards the, the future of CAPS, not only for Cedar Falls and the, and the growth in Cedar Falls, but across the Cedar Valley. Thank you for watching this episode of Parent University.